Hi guys and girls, it's username K and welcome back to my channel. Now for those of you who don't know who I am and what I do, I am a UK based motor vlogger and I kind of specialise in motorcycle reviews, motorcycle walk rounds, in-depth analysis of the tech that's on the bikes and also just riding them and giving you guys my general opinion. I also do a lot of trips and stuff like that, motorcycle adventures, trips, experiences, and I always try and take you guys along for the ride. So, in this vlog specifically, I'm going to be reviewing BMW's F900R. Now, I've very kindly been lent this bike from the good guys at Halliwell Jones Motorrad in Chester. They are a relatively new franchise and they've been operational for about a year now. And going forward on the channel, these guys will be providing me with the BMWs to review. So, massive thank you to those guys for hooking me up with the latest and greatest. So, in this video, I'm going to do a walk around. We're going to have a look at this bike. We're going to look at its options that are available. And we're finally going to ride it. So, if you're interested in that, then keep watching and I'll roll the intro. In this vlog we're going to walk around BMW's middleweight naked and break down some stats of this bike. This bike starts from £9,090 but has the ability to be specced up as much as you desire with a whole host of optional extras. For a £9,090 base model F900R you get the 6.5 inch TFT dash with connectivity LED lights all round, BMW's automatic stability control, a rain and road mode, BMW's ABS, adjustable levers and a 12 volt socket as standard. Optional extras include Headlight Pro which gives you cornering lights, Riding Mode Pro which includes an extra two modes, Dynamic and Dynamic Pro, as well as upgraded ABS Pro which is cornering ABS to you and me, Dynamic Traction Control, Motor Slip Regulation and Dynamic Brake Control as well. Other swanky upgrades include Dynamic Electronic Suspension Adjustment, Keyless Ride, an SOS button, a tyre pressure monitoring system, quick shifter and auto blipper, cruise control, heated grips and much more. BMW has even put together cost saving packages that work out cheaper than buying these features separately. Before I get carried away with myself, at the heart of this bike we have an 895cc parallel twin producing 105 brake horsepower along with 92 newton meters of torque. Front suspension we have non-adjustable 43mm upside downers and at the rear we have a monoshock that has manual preload and rebound damping adjustment at the turn of a dial. Unless specced up with dynamic electronic suspension adjustment, which as mentioned is optional. Moving to the brakes, on the front we have two meaty 320mm twin discs with a Brembo four pot radially mounted caliper. Then over to the rear we have a 265mm single disc with a single piston Brembo caliper. The bike has a 13 litre tank weighs 211 kilograms fully fueled and has an 815 mil seat height. Right, let's have a quick look at the dash. So this is what you get for the main screen. You have your revs that run nicely across the center. You have a nice big gear indicator at the bottom right, just above the time. You have your miles an hour nice and big at top left and then on the top you have all the information that you could possibly need. You have total miles that the bike's done, trip, trip 2, MPG, there's a few things that are a bit useless like when you should next have a brake, average speed, tyre pressures because this one is equipped with a tyre pressure monitor system, 
how many miles till you need to fuel up and then your range in bar format. In the top right hand corner we have what mode you're in and this bike has a rain mode and a road mode. You can get ride mode pro which will give you dynamic and dynamic pro but that is an optional extra. If we press the down button we have a lot of options to choose from. We have my vehicle, you can have a picture of your vehicle on there. You can also have this when you're riding because your miles an hour appears up here and your gear indicator there. So you still have the crucial information necessary. If you go across, you've got your onboard computer, your trip computer, tyre pressures, but of course this will only show once you're moving, and if the bike's even equipped with TPMS at all, and when the service is due. If we go back, we've got navigation, which you can connect this 6.5 inch Colour TFT to your phone, and from there use navigation, Although this specific bike is prepped with preparation for sat-nav. Again, it's an optional extra. If we look back at the screen and we move across, we've got media so you can play music, telephone, again so you can answer calls, and then we have settings. Vehicle settings, lights, comfort turn indicator, so self-cancelling. System settings, date and time, units, language. So we have connections, if we go across here you can connect your mobile, rider's helmet, passenger's helmet. We have display, so we can change the brightness, we can change the status line content, which is all that stuff that you saw at the top, so we're going to get rid of consumption, I'm not bothered about that, riding time, don't care, when I need to have a break, also not bothered, don't really care about my average speed, we'll keep tyre pressures. So basically what happens when you go back to your main screen, you only have on that top line things that you actually care about. So okay, let's cut to the fun stuff. Right guys, we're on it, we're on board. BMW's F900R. So let's uh, let's revisit this and see what it's all about. I say revisit because I have ridden this bike before, but I haven't officially reviewed it on my channel before. So don't run down the Chihuahua. Don't run down the Chihuahua. So for me, the BMW F900R epitomizes gentlemanly gentlewomanly, sophisticated, elegance, tame mannerisms and is just generally a very pleasant bike to ride. Now obviously BSB use F900Rs in their cup race series where everyone's on the same bikes but what is it like in its normal road going trim? Well, the F900R can be anything you kind of want it to be. It's a very versatile naked and there's a few reasons why I say that. One, the features are extremely buildable and two, the seat height options are extremely versatile as well. Two areas in which the F900R excels above its competition. Okay, so as to not mislead anybody, a lot of the options aren't buildable over time. A lot of them, you have to kind of decide at the point of order what features you want because there's a fair few of them that aren't retrofittable. So it's quite important that you decide on the spec that you want before that order is placed because there's a lot of it that can't be added. But the base price of this bike starts at £9,090 which actually makes it pretty, pretty good in terms of price. Of course you have some standard features that you get for that price such as the 6.5 inch colour TFT dash which is stunning. 
and very easy and very intuitive to use. I say this time and time again on different reviews, some that aren't even BMW, but everybody needs to aspire to the level of ease of the BMW TFT dash, in my humble opinion. Jesus Christ. Oh, don't give me a heart attack, man. Again, as standard, we have road mode, we have a rain mode. Now, this bike doesn't have dynamic ESA, but this specific bike has been specced with quite a few things. So, we've got the sport puller option, which is very, very nice. That's going to set you back £415. But with that colour option, you do get an engine spoiler like belly pan, which you don't get on the triple black or the standard red colour, which is a non cost option. That's the red. Triple black's obviously going to cost you. It's going to cost you, I think, around £200 for triple black, which triple black's gorgeous to be fair. I think this bike, uh, when I specced it up on the configurator, which is a really easy to use configurator by the way, I think I got this to just under £12,000. Again, this has got keyless, you don't have to go keyless, you can have a mechanical key. And then talking about a versatility perspective from like a seat height point of view. Standard seat height on this is 815 mil, but you can get a chassis load version of this bike, which you would have to get done from factory, which is usually a factory order, unless you can find one in the dealership that's just spec that way, but they're generally not. Somebody might put an order in for a chassis lowered one and then cancel, so that's where you typically may find a chassis lowered version of one of these bikes. But then that takes it to 770 mil, which is cruiser levels of low. If you don't want to fully commit to a chassis lowered one and you'll think you'll be alright with a bit of shaving out of the seat, you can take it down, potholes. You can take it down to 790 mil, which is still exceptionally low. Oh, let's wang it round this bend. Wow! But if 815 mil is kind of too low for you, if you're a bit of a tall human and it's it's just not not tall enough for you, you've got too much of an acute bend in your knee and it's causing you a bit of pain. Wow, look at the views. You can always get the high seat, which takes it to 835 mil. And then we have a comfort seat. So if you're struggling with the comfort of the bike, you can put a comfort seat on it, which takes it to 840 mil. And then if you're super tall, there is a really high seat, which takes it to 865 mil, which is really, really tall. And the seat actually changed the whole shape and visual dynamics of this bike. I'll try and pop a picture on the screen. So yeah, in my opinion, it is one of the most customizable, versatile nakeds on the market. Please don't pull out on me. Please don't pull out on me. Okay, so this is where we go from the 30 to the National baby. Sounds good to me. We've got new tyres, so we're not going to be too radical. But it'll be nice to see how it fares over this road because it's very bumpy and we have non-adjustable suspension on the front we've got a bit of adjustability on the rear but we'll see what it's like fresh out on Zbox. bear in mind I weigh about nine and a half stone so how it feels for me absorbing the bumps is probably going to be quite different to your good self so I would definitely recommend test riding one yourself 
check out the guys at Halliwell Jones if you're local to them. Oh, so far it's, it is eating the bumps up. It's pretty good to be fair. It's keeping the bike quite stable, quite planted. I'm feeling quite in control. Pothole, of course. Yeah, this is a this is quite a fun bike. Don't get me wrong, you definitely feel its weight compared to its competitors, I would say. That's why I kind of call it the gentlemanly sophisticated option in the naked market. Because you've got you've got some competitors that have some crazy power to weight ratios going on like the 790 Duke, the Triumph Street Triple R, but with you know a better power to weight ratio in this kind of segment sometimes it equals um, you know the bike feeling a little more nervous, uh, a little more twitchy, a little more flighty very very much point and shoot which can you know if you're not used to such quick steering can kind of be a little bit unpredictable at times or catch you unawares but with something that is you know a little bit more heavy like this at 211 kilograms wet you do kind of have that predictability of where it's going to be when you wind the throttle on which can be quite a nice feeling particularly you know if you're not necessarily a speed demon or if you're quite new to riding so what some people see as a con can definitely be seen as another person's pro right I'm gonna go down here I've never been down here before um, and I just quite fancy giving it a go so Wow, look at this road. Use all the road because we can see for days it's clear. We've got some Bridgestone S21Rs on this bike, which I don't think I've ridden with these before. But modern tyres are actually usually pretty good now in scrubbing quite quick, but obviously, you know, from a, me being a responsible YouTuber perspective, always you try and give them 100 miles before you start giving it the berries. Oh, what is this road? It's kind of cool. But yes, I, I absolutely love the whole optional extra thing with BMW. I love the whole elegant TFT dash. I love the, you know, typically reliable, they are a typically reliable brand I would say. But also with the new bikes you get a three years manufacturer's warranty. Usually two years on used bikes that you purchase from a dealer. So I think that's quite good. But yeah, what a, what a place. Narrow roads, nice and chill, we've got a van coming we can get free. Thank you. That's the beauty of being a little weasel on a motorcycle. You can get through it all. But yeah, it's town work is great. Riding position, I find it very, very neutral. Guys, what I'd, I'd be really grateful for if you could, just to help share the wealth and share the knowledge because you know, I'm not naive enough to think that I am the oracle and know everything. As much as I'd like to, I just don't. So, if you own an F900R, why don't you consider sharing your opinions in the comments below? Because I feel like... Oh, speed bump. Yeah, definitely consider letting me know and everyone else that's reading the comments what you truly feel about your bike because I kind of pride myself with my YouTube that I don't delete like the negative comments like I feel like 
when we're trying to you know navigate this journey of what bike is going to be right for us it's really important to see the good bad and the ugly because you know it, it's life so guys yeah let me know what you think about this bike in the comments below and i hope you have enjoyed my brief thoughts on what i think about the f 900 r right guys and girls i'm back from my ride out on halliwell jones's bmw f 900 r now what do i think about this bike given the fact that i've just had a few hours spanking it around the country lanes basically i think this is a great bike for somebody that's looking for a middleweight naked that's not going to intimidate them now don't get me wrong this that's not me politely saying that it's boring it's far from boring when you get it absolutely tanking along on the country lanes it really does show you that it is a capable machine and that it can deal with everything that you throw at it but if you're not choosing to ride it like that it's very predictable in where it's going to be on the road its power is gradual and linear it's got revs all through the range which is great for just feeling constantly like in control when you're winding it on so i think it'll be ideal for somebody that's on an a2 license because you can get this uh, a2 compatible it is a different model with i think about 94 horsepower so it can be restricted and then unleashed after passing so you're missing out on a little bit of horsepower from the full fat version which is this i don't feel like bmw are trying to appeal to the hooligan rider with this bike so for example you have like the Street Triple R, you have the NT09, they kind of have a bit of a reputation as, you know, a bit more power than this and a, a little less weight. And I think if you want something that you're gonna have on the back wheel screaming, that's the path to go down. But I think if you're a responsible adult, you, you know, appreciate uh, getting your hustle on, but also, you know, you don't want it to scare the pants off you, then I think the F900R is a great choice. One of the options that you do get on the F900R, which this bike isn't specced up with, and there's a, a giveaway clue as to how you can know off first glance if it has this feature, is the option of dynamic electronic suspension adjustment. Now this basically means that you can adjust the preload of this bike at the touch of a button. You can have it in road mode, which will adapt to road riding, or you can put it in dynamic mode, which is you know more firmer and sporty of a, a preload setting normally there is a spring on that button and that is what you would use to change the uh, dynamic suspension settings on the tft dash but also upon first glance if you have a look you can see that the shock is black but if it had dynamic electronic suspension adjustment specifically for the 2023 models i can't comment on the past models because i don't have one in front of me but that shock will be red so that is the telltale sign as to whether the bike has dynamic electronic suspension adjustment but the dynamic electronic suspension adjustment is only applicable to the rear suspension on the bike it doesn't do anything to the front suspension they are just 43 mil non-adjustable upside down forks the bike for this quarter has 0% finance options which is great if you don't like paying interest on the finance that you take out on a motorcycle now that's only available for three months will bmw extend it maybe they will maybe they won't it's always worth asking your dealer right that's me done i hope you've enjoyed this vlog i hope you have enjoyed my experience on bmw's f900r if you're in the market for a bmw again check the guys out at halliwell jones motorrad in chester great gang can't do enough for you and yeah on that note if you've enjoyed this video hit the subscribe button and until the next one I'll see you then bye